I am not resigned to the shutting away of loving hearts in the hard ground. So it is, and so it will be, for so it has been, time out of mind. Into the darkness they go, the wise and the lovely. Crowned with lilies and with laurel they go, but I am not resigned. Lovers and thinkers, into the earth with you. Be one with the dull, the indiscriminate dust, a fragment of what you felt, of what you knew, a formula, a phrase remains, but the best is lost. Down, down, down into the darkness of the grave, gently they go, the beautiful, the tender, the kind, quietly they go, the intelligent, the witty, the brave. I know, but I do not approve, and I am not resigned. Perhaps we can find comfort in the words of the ancient sage. God, what are we that you are mindful of us? Or indeed, those who come after us that you take account. Our lives are as vanity, for our days pass away as a shadow. In the morning, we flourish and blossom forth. In the evening, we are cut down and wither. You turn us to contrition and demand return, O ye children. If you were wise, you would consider your end, for when you die, you shall carry nothing away. Your glory shall not descend after you. But trust this, God does redeem the souls of the servants. None of them who trust shall be forsaken. Blessed is God, ruler of the universe, who forms us in the image of divinity, who nourishes and sustains us in goodness, who causes us to die in accordance with holy decree, and who has implanted within us immortal life. Blessed is God, judge of truth. Amikamat HaVovah Shalom. May Diane come to her eternal home. We weep for the pain that she endured. How long and intense was her suffering. Sometimes we feel anger because of the random blows that strike down our loved ones and our friends. We ask for what purpose, O oh God, what sense to the torment of people, the affliction of those we love. Yet out of our grief may come a response. Let the heroism with which Diane struggled instruct us. Let those who go down to the pit of suffering be our teachers. Let those who sacrificially minister to them teach us about love and devotion. And let us learn that beyond the affliction there is a vision of God who, like parents comforting their children, brings consolation to us. There is a vision of our loved one breaking out of the prison of her wounded self and entering upon eternal life. This is our faith. May it be your solace. Amen. Hatsor tamim polo ki chol drachav mishpat. El emuna ve'ena vel tzadik v'yasharhu. Hatsor tamim b'chol poav. Mi yomar lo ma tifal hashalit v'matu v'ma'a me'mit v'mechayi morit sh'o v'ya'al. Hatsor tamim b'chol ma'ase. Thy work, O God, is perfect. For all thy ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and right. Who can say what doest thou? Thou bringest death and giveth life. What mortal can demand of thee what hast thou wrought? Thou alone, O God, dost righteously apportion both life and death. In thy hand is the destiny of all souls. Thou wilt not forget us. Thy mercy will surely abide with us. Blessed art thou, judge of truth, Baruch Dayan Emet who does ordain death and summon us to life. Those are hard words. Those are really hard words to say and to hear today. A tragedy such as this is completely unreasonable. It is beyond words. The anguish of this family at Diane's death is so excruciating that no eulogy can salve the pain in your hearts and minds. In truth, we who are gathered in support of you are not here to console you, but to join you in weeping, to mix our tears with yours as we recall Diane's beautiful life cut so tragically short. We weep for all that was, 
the sudden onset of devastating physical and mental torment, the blink of an eye in the blink of an eye rapidity that tries, it tried, but it failed, completely failed to wipe out more than 60 years of goodness. The vanished ability to cope, to reason, to address and overcome challenges. We weep for all that was yet to be. The promises of a productive retirement, the joy of a loving marriage grown to maturity, beloved children claiming their own places in the world, growing grandchildren, last years with an adored parent, sisters again with time to spend together, friends and adventures yet to be. We weep for the randomness and cruelty of illness. We weep for its viciousness and persistence. We weep for our inability to conquer and vanquish her suffering. We weep for this is all that we can do. Mike and Emily and Nathaniel and Matthew, Lou and Karen and Lori and Stephen, I left your home on Friday and I've been thinking of little else than your pain and your grief since. I've garnered no wisdom. But I did notice that in your tears between and through the wonderful stories and memories you so generously and lovingly shared, there was very little anger and no blaming. This largeness of spirit is, I believe, a testimony to Diane and to her spirit. Her spirit of helpfulness, joy, compassion, and love. These traits are in you and now become the still living testimony to this extraordinary woman. In this week's Torah portion, we read of the death of the high priest Pinchas. Torah comments, and it shall be unto him and to his seed after him the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Pinchas is gone, but his achievements are not. The future was built on the firm foundation laid for him and for us, those like Diane. Pinchas is gone, but his achievements are not. The future was built for him on a firm foundation and laid out for those in the past. And now Diane has laid that out for us, and she has gone first. That is part, but only part, of our sad inheritance from her. As Diane's beloved family and cherished friends, it is left to you, to us, to continue her passions, to compete with joy, to reach out to those in need, to strive for the best life possible, to love wildly and fully, to dote on Juni and Arlo, to hold systems accountable to their highest aspirations, to celebrate each day, and to find hope for the future. There is a beautiful legend about a comforting cup that we may recall today. The tender story goes that God holds this kos de miut, a cup of tears, and goes around, the Holy One goes around collecting the tears of those who grieve. When the cup of tears is filled, we are assured that the Messiah will come and redeem the world. We pray you know then that your tears are not for naught. As words fail us, tears unite and console us. The copious tears of this bereaved family and all who mourn with you will surely hasten our redemption and bring closer to reality the world for which Diane worked in her life in a time, as the, as the psalmist said, when they who sowed in tears shall reap in joy. May it be so. Amen. We're going to hear first from Michael, then Lori, and then Anne, and finally Emily. Thank you, everybody, for being here. This is by far the most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my life. 
and I'm sorry to start with a cliche, but everyone that knew Diane knows that she had a smile and a personality that would light up a room. That's exactly how Diane lit up my life for 40 years. Ever since we first met on a blind date, it really was love at first sight, but we all know that that's not enough to keep a marriage going for 38 years. Please excuse me. <laughs> Turns out that meeting Diane was the best thing that ever happened to me. I often told her, everything that is good in my life happened because of you. And that was not an exaggeration. Diane was the most generous an amazing person I have ever known. Her entire life was a mitzvah. She was unerringly and sometimes unnervingly honest. <laughs> she was devoted and loving, and our marriage grew stronger and more precious every year. Diane lived for her family. Emily and Matthew Please know and believe in your hearts that watching you grow up was the greatest pleasure in mom's life and my own. Diane, my sweet girl, you are the love of my life. I can never be replaced. And your family is crushed with sorrow. By anyone's measure, your life ended much too soon. For us and so many others who share our grief, I hope this prayer will bring some solace. I'm going to ask you to finish this for me because I don't think I can make it through. There it is. Here or there. I know. It's actually Bialik. Alas for those who cannot sing but die with their music in them. Let us treasure the time we have and resolve to use it well. Continuing each moment, counting each moment precious, a chance to apprehend some truth, to experience some beauty, to conquer some evil, to relieve some suffering, to love and be loved, to achieve something of lasting worth. And this we pray, help us then to fulfill the promise that is in each of us, and so to conduct ourselves that generations hence it will be true to say of us, the world is better because for a brief space, they lived in it. Amen. My sister Diane and I couldn't have been more different. We were sisters and I loved her very much. She was more gregarious with a wicked sense of humor and a quick wit. Diane would and could talk to anyone, strike up a conversation and develop some connection. I know she got that trait from my father. My sister was warm, kind, generous and had an engaging personality. She blew me away with how smart and funny she was. My sister loved to torture me with her evil eye under the covers during our family vacations. And as an extra torture took me at age of 13, she was 18, to see The Exorcist, which convinced me I was possessed and probably still am. <laughs> My sister and I lived in separate cities during our 20s, and when she lived in California, I saw her only a few times during those years. We grew closer in our 30s when she and I were both back in Cleveland. She was married and had started a family. I will miss our red carpet parties before every award show. The shows were less important than commenting on the fashions. I will miss our family dinners, mostly at her house. My sister and I's running joke, we would always have to have a lot of food. After dinner with my folks and their friends often left us wanting more. Can you believe we were hungry on Thanksgiving? 
I will miss going to movies with her. Our mother often won tickets for previews before the movies were released. Flea markets, she looked at everything. County fairs, festivals, she made those events more fun. While Diane cooked many wonderful things, her spaghetti and lasagna were so good, I will never forget the time she baked parchment paper in her cake. <laughs> we laughed about all of the cooking failures, but the parchment episode always made us laugh harder. <laughs> I will never be ready to say goodbye to my sister. It does not seem real, and I don't understand. I can't accept this. I'm going to miss her every day. I love you, Diane. So Diane was a life force, all energy and smiles. When I moved back to Cleveland 40 years ago, I was lucky enough since then to have three best friends in my adulthood, and Diane, I knew the longest. We met through Maj, of course, games, through Leslie Jaffe, when Matthew was in diapers, running around in that first house in Beechwood. And that grew, that friendship grew to include our whole families. My husband, Bob, Melissa and Max, Emily and Matthew. We started out at Atwood. We started the first of many family vacations. The Jaffees joined us on that first one. And they went on for many years, but the only constant was the Michaels and the Axels. Like the families just couldn't make it go with us. We had the males. They came more than one year, but maybe not in a row. Of course, we had the rehorse. They came. They didn't come. They came. Um, we had the Bob and checks. I will uh, never forget the time that I made the horrible mistake of bringing light sour cream for our steak and potato night. We had each family would cook a night, and then we'd try to find some place, the county fair, to eat one of the other nights. I have to have regular sour cream. Well, there's like no grocery store. She backs out and the minivan went into the ditch. And luckily the Bob and Checks were with us that year because he had a winch and towed her out. Um, it, it was just, it was a wonderful friendship. We had so many great memories from those times. She would sing those corny songs around the campfire. And I think our favorite part was the last day when we had to pack up and get out at 10 o'clock and we'd make our husband and kids drop everything home because we went to every antique store and wayside and we, we bought, we, I didn't buy so much, I loved encouraging her to buy more than I actually bought. Um, and I look at your house, Michael, and I see the story behind everything, behind everything. And uh, remember that one time and she really just tore her muscles away. And I'm like, walk it off, Diane. We hit garage sale after garage sale. She was laid up in the bed for three months, I think, and didn't make school. And I'm like, you can walk this off. We are garage sailing on the way home. And, and she was game. She, she did it. She limped up the hills with me. Little did we know that that's what had happened. It was my favorite part. And you know, as the kids got older, they got jobs. They went to college. And those... Vacations just kind of petered out. No real decision not to do it. But playing mahjong, going to movies. We, hit, we did a triple header one day because we would only pay for the first movie. And then we'd sneak in and we'd sneak in. And we kept trying to do triple headers. But I think we never found that third, mo that third movie. And then uh, things were getting a little more tighter there at the Cedar Lee. So it was a little harder. But... Um, you know, that was, it was games. You know, we played games at Pleasant Hill and we really connected. And then in 2017, we found a third family that would stick it out with us without our kids. It was Ken and Lori Angie. And so we started the Michaels, Axels, and Angies. 2017, we uh, went to the Hawking Hills. And 2018, we went up to Canada wine country, 
2019, we went to Niagara on the Lake wine country. Wine, wine, wine. You'll see all the pictures I posted, the three of us. Wine, wine, wine. Um, and then last year, it was supposed to be the grand reopening of the new cabins of Pleasant Hill. And COVID hit and took, took that last vacation away from us. It was going to have our kids and their kids. But we did manage to get one last get together May 1st after everything with no masks, real hugs, and more wine. <laughs> you know, Mike, when we were, when we would play Maj, you know, we would be um, like griping about our family, bragging about our family, talking, laughing, eating, a little Maj that drove. Diane's mom was. It's crazy with how we play it. I, you guys used to don't play. You're just talking and eating. But that's what we did. And we would sit there. And I just thought of this because your, your wife would think of something and it would be, Mike, 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 until Mike would come. <laughs> and she, But she loved. She bragged about how you would pamper her. You would get breakfast ready for her in the morning at 5.30 in the morning. You would make her lunch when she had to get up early and go and, you know, go to school, to work. Um, she, she loved you. And she felt herself, she always smiled when she talked about that in between her barking. Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> um, she did. She loved you a lot. She was just a life force energy that we will all, all miss because she just burned like a star. There's tissues up here. Okay. You know, it's funny. I, I brought, like, no makeup home because, obviously, and this morning I was in her room, and I, she has so much makeup. I mean, it's like, there's lipstick everywhere, and I don't, I don't know what, anyway, I put her mascara on because I could just hear her saying, you, like, you need a little mascara. Um... Okay, so I thank you from the bottoms of our hearts for being here, and um, I just want to, like, put this out there that um, I have a lot written down, and I'm going to read it, and you're stuck, and, um, but there's also, like, a lot that I want to say that is, it's not written out because it's, they're just stories that I know, and I'm going to tell them to you, and I don't want you to panic if it, <laughs> If it feels like I'm losing my, because there's a beginning and a middle and an end, so I'm not going to, I always know that feeling when you feel like they're, oh my God, what are they saying? Okay, so, okay, um, so, here we go. In a million years, I never thought that I would be standing here today in this way and under these circumstances. My mom was a presence. She was a force of freaking nature. She wouldn't have said freaking. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have either. Um, she was the life of the party and the person that you would remember, even if you had only met her once. I've spent a lot of time with my thoughts in the last three days, and I've been flooded with memories about my mom that have brought me joy and laughter. My brother and I were kind of going through my running list on the phone, and we were laughing, and in that way, it brought me some comfort, and I hope that it brings you maybe a little bit of laughter and comfort, too. <clears throat> she was great. She was silly. She was kind. She was wildly inappropriate <laughs> and um, she would laugh at some of these so if you feel so compelled please do so um, I should warn you I there's a good chance I might drop 
uh, an F bomb. She loved an F. She just loved that word. Okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> if you have seen the movie Mean Girls, you might remember Amy Poehler's famous line I'm not a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. And um, my mom was everyone's cool mom. She. <sighs> It was almost frustrating because my friends would want to hang out at my house with my mom. Um, and there was just something about the way that she trusted my brother and I. And she, she knew us enough to trust us and allowed us a lot of freedom within reason that left us feeling safe but never smothered. Um, she kind of let us make our own decisions and, and she kind of followed our lead um, maybe sometimes to a fault when I had my mind set that I wanted my bat mitzvah to be Mardi Gras themed she rolled with it which like as an adult is hilarious because that's a Catholic holiday but whatever um, but she rolled with it and the 13 year olds were wearing beads it's it's very it's very funny um, my Aunt already alluded to it, but she had it. There was a long history of the family of inappropriate movie going experiences. And um, when I was in, I think, fourth grade, she took me to see Miss Saigon. That's not horrible, but, um, and it went late because it was downtown. And I, she brought me to school late the next day, and the teacher asked me why I was there late. And I said, I went to see a musical. And she said, Which one? I said, Miss Saigon. And she was like, Do you even know what that's about? And I said, Yeah, a prostitute. I think she called her. I think the teacher called home. Um, I think she brought you to see Gladiator when you were like five. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of, she wasn't afraid to expose us because she knew, she knew we could handle it and she trusted us. And um, she, my house was the Sex in the City house. My girlfriends, specifically Shelly, would come over. Her mom wouldn't let her watch it. So we watched it at my house. And, um, yeah, and I remember she said, uh, your dad is mad at me because he thinks this is horrible and you shouldn't be watching this. And I told him, just because you're watching it doesn't mean you're going to do it. And she was right. <laughs> um, to that note, I had a kind of serious boyfriend towards the end of high school. Things were getting a little more serious, and I think she could sense it. And um, I always say I can't wait to give the talk to my daughter because it worked. Um she said, Emily, you can have sex with him, but it's not gonna, he's not going to be good at it. <laughs> it worked. Um, she trusted us. Okay. Um, to know my mom was to shop with my mom. Uh, she could sift through a sail rack with race and dig out the most beautiful items that were always magically on like extra extra sale and um, she was like the person who was so proud to tell everyone what she paid for something um, I could just hear her saying like I got this for a 40% off an extra 40% off you know and um, yeah it was her sport and she was an Olympian um, I didn't remember this story, but my dad shared this a few nights ago that um, one night she was at the Dillard's outlet, which was, I don't know if you guys, it was like a warehouse. It was, it's, I hated it. Um, and um, she was in line for the dressing rooms, which were always long. And my dad had to bring her dinner because she was not, she was not going to get, she was not going to lose her spot in the line. Um, she was nothing if not dedicated to a deal. And I, some, one of like the most memorable arguments or maybe even fights we had, she was so pissed off at me because I bought stuff at Bed Bath & Beyond without a coupon, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, okay. Uh, one of the things I love the most about shopping with my mom was the way she would talk to people in dressing rooms. Um, she never hesitated to tell someone who was checking themselves out in the mirror when something looked great or that they needed a smaller size. Let me go get you a smaller size. Um, or she would ask a complete stranger what 
what they thought about the thing that she was trying on and the thing that was so frustrating to me and annoying is that they always looked banging she just was such a babe um <clears throat> i will miss shopping with her for new outfits for special occasions but also for no occasions i will miss her purses full of coupons and shit and the thrill of using them um especially expired ones <laughs> and i will miss cramming the two of us into a dressing room because we were too impatient to wait for one or we would just take the handicapped one and have a lot of space um <clears throat> this is long guys i'm so sorry um another thing that my mom loved was to throw a party to host to feed to stay up late with the guests which were often my friends from college uh and then to vacuum at midnight because um she just could not bear to wake up to the, a dirty house so she would vacuum until whatever time she needed to um she spent time at those parties with us and with our friends and it's not because she was trying to keep tabs on us um it's because she loved our friends and that continued she loves our friend she loved our friends and she loved our friends kids and she would their parents would come to Columbus for their kids birthdays and baby namings and she just really she loved deeply <clears throat> back to parties um she threw pinterest worthy parties before it was cool um my Cleveland Jewish newsworthy Victorian tea party was one of her pride prideful moments she had a heart player and all of the, us wore white gloves and now as a mom I understand what a nightmare that was uh she threw cast parties sometimes on a whim if she found out nobody else was throwing one she'd have the whole fucking high school over and just go to Costco and load up and also as a mom I understand what a card at Costco costs now so she hosted my college a cappella group um when we would come to Cleveland to sing at Menor Park and um my friends would just everyone would be like vying for who got to stay at my house cuz the rest had to stay somewhere else and that wasn't as fun they one year they came it was the golden globes and one of our members Andy just loves the red carpet and he he and my mom stayed in contact even after I really didn't with him and they would they would talk about movies and dresses it was great okay <clears throat> however um her love of hosting did not necessarily translate into adeptness in the kitchen um she could make a really amazing jello mold nobody does who does that I do that now. Um it was good. But uh some of my fondest memories of my mom in the kitchen were more like episodes of Nailed It from Netflix. If you haven't seen it, they're just the worst. Um my friend Ellie told me that one of her first memories of my mom when they came to visit was my mom was wearing one of her antique aprons and she said I'm baking a cake and I read that the eggs are better when they are room temperature so she was wearing them <laughs> and then she got really distracted and leaned over and crushed the eggs and that pretty much sums her up <laughs> um My aunt shared the parchment cake. I had forgotten about that because the cake that sticks out in my mind we like we called the toothpaste cake um because she accidentally put a full teaspoon of peppermint extract instead of vanilla and if you know pe peppermint you're supposed to use like a drop maybe. Um but the best part was that she um she we she ate it. Like I think she was the only one that ate it. She just kept going it's not that bad. Um It was bad. Uh, all right, I was going to tell the sour cream story and but you did a better job, so <laughs> mazel tov. Okay. Um she wasn't a great planner and almost never read a recipe fully. So my dad would often have to make like 3 or 4 5 trips to the grocery store on Thanksgiving throughout the day because <clears throat> 
because she picked the recipes out as we went. So, I mean, with the exception of mashed potatoes, she was deciding from books when, when she was making it. And we, of course, never had everything. Um, but my dad did it without complaining um, because this was her artistic process. And he, this is why we loved her. This is why he loved her. <clears throat> as I was thinking about my mom and making this running list on my phone, I realized that a lot of her, for lack of a better word, quirks, um, that I once found completely mortifying are the things I love the most about her. <laughs> and the things that I will miss the most, <laughs> they're so embarrassing. Um, so this is like a list, and I'm just going to try to go like really quick because... Ugh, they're just so funny. She loved paper towels. They were like the Windex in her Greek wedding. You know, they were good for everything. She'd stick them in her ears when she'd go water skiing so the air wouldn't hurt her ears. Um, she would, whenever she went to the gym and worked out, she'd bring a roll. Who does that? She literally brought rolls of paper towels to her workout because she sweat profusely and she just didn't want to be without. Um, she would rip a paper towel, like wipe something and then crumple it and leave them all around our house. And my husband would be like, picking up tiny little napkins and paper towels. Um, but the funny thing about it is that she loved paper towels, but there was never a box of tissues in the house. Like she was just loyal to the paper towels. Um, <clears throat> she kept you on speakerphone, which was embarrassing. She didn't tell you you were on speakerphone and I would be talking shit about somebody. And then I would hear somebody like flush a toilet and she'd be like in the locker room at the gym in front of probably everybody anyway, um, which was fun. She was so funny and persnickety about the weirdest shit, like toast. If you ever went out to breakfast with her, especially recently, she just had to have toast the perfect way. And she would tell the waitress, like she knew they were gonna mess it up. So she would say, I want toast. I want it toasted on both sides. And I would say to her, if you know they're gonna mess it up, why do you order toast? And she's like, I, I shouldn't have to not order toast. They should toast it right. Um, yeah. She uh, had a thing called a feeder purse. Um, that's not a thing that people have, but she did, um, which was when we would go shopping, when she would come to Columbus, we would, I would drive to Easton, and she would have two bags, the feeder purse, which was the big bag, and then the bag she was going to carry. She would pick what she needed and then take it on her way, and then she'd have to hide the feeder purse under the seat because, you know, she didn't want anybody to take it. Um, she... Uh, had a love of uh, knickknackery and uh, antiques everywhere. And for those of you who are going to be joining us at our house, just look around. And um, one of the things we were laughing about is her affinity for other people's dead relatives and pictures. Um, we, she just collected other people's family members. Um, it was, it's creepy and funny. Um, she was the originator of distracted driving. She would put her mascara on in the rear view mirror while driving. And um, we found out that, that the act of applying makeup whilst driving is called farting with a D. And um, she would always say she was worried she was going to get a ticket for farting. Um, there's just so much. My brother um, shared, you know, one time she stuck her hand down <laughs> the disposal to check if it was on. <laughs> There were these flighty moments that were so, they're just so funny. Um, she would eat an ice cream cone, but she'd lick it so that it was always pointy. You know, weird stuff. She was a horrible driver. Um, she, she was a horrible driver. And my brother said she, the only time she'd put a turn signal on is when she'd reached the the end of the driveway to leave the house and she would turn the signal on and then leave and go drive away oh god she was an open book she'd brag about how her doctors were so talented that she didn't need anesthesia to get a colonoscopy um and it was i was like i can't believe you would tell people that but it's so funny and she was such an open book and she made everyone around her an open book We talked a lot about games. We played so many games. And um, when it was her turn, 
she would stretch out her turn, right? Like the timer will run. And how many times were we like, Diane, go. And she would go, okay, 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 okay. She would just say, okay, for another like minute and a half until she, she had a roll. But like the second it wasn't her turn, if it was somebody else's turn, she would like pass it aggressively and be like, Who, whose turn is it? Um, yeah. <clears throat> My mom was vivacious. She always wanted to suck up the last drop of every experience. And when she did something she was excited about, she was all in. And I think that this quality um, in particular is what makes the last three months so painful because we know how much she really loved to love life. And it could be exhausting, but awesome when we went to amusement parks we'd get there when it opened and we wouldn't leave until they closed even if we wanted to go home um when it was her turn to water ski we would like the kids we'd all be doing like stunts and we'd tire out really quick you know um and we'd wipe out and both of that when it was her turn all the kids were so pissed off because she'd water ski and she wouldn't do anything fancy she would just smile <laughs> And she would hold on, and it would be like a 40-minute turn. And sometimes we wouldn't notice when she fell because we nobody was watching her. And you, right? We wouldn't watch her anymore because we were bored. And she, when she, she never fell because she never did anything fancy. When her arms got tired, she just like let go, and then she would just like slowly like go. She water skied forever. She made us trick or treat forever. It would be snowing and raining and we'd want to go home and she'd be like, one more street. Um, she watched movies. We'd sneak into 10 movies. It was just crazy. Okay. Um, I'm almost done, I promise. <clears throat> this, um, this last chunk, I think, is going to be like the hardest for me to share, um, but probably the most important to me. Um, we were looking at photo albums yesterday, and I was looking at pictures of her with my brother and I. My brother and me. I don't know. Papa, you tell me. Um, and as a mom myself now, I know the look in her eye. I know what it feels like because... I felt it from her, but I feel it when I hold my babies, when I take pictures with my babies. And it was more than a good picture. It was, she adored us. <clears throat> I am so grateful to have had 33 years to make just the best memories with her as my mom. But... I am just absolutely heartbroken that my kids will not be able to do that with her as a grandma, as a nanny. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> you know, and before this happened, I could feel her, I could hear her and things that I would do and say. You know, bedtime songs. I sang her all those stupid songs. I can't, I mean, I sing Junie White Choral Bells every night. She can't sing it in a round yet, but she will. Um, <laughs> um, I say things to her that I can just hear my mom saying, like when she drops her food, there's no such thing as ground poisoning, and I pick it up and I wipe it up. Um, I know that as I continue to raise my kids, that her presence and her influence on my journey as a mom will only grow. And mm, the parenting legacy that she leaves for us is a ferocious love. Thanks, Ellie. Unwavering devotion. Like she came to every concert, even when they were so bad. Um, and a deep, joyful pride in her kids. We were so lucky to have her as our mom, and we will miss her 
very much. Her memory will absolutely and always be for a blessing. Thank you all. Oh God, author of life and death, our wisdom is small our vision short. One by one, our companions passing along the road of life disappear from our view. We know that each must walk the same door path to the doorway of the grave. We strain to see what lies beyond the gate, but all is darkness to our mortal sight. Yet even the darkness is not too dark for you, O eternal one, but the night shines as the day. You have created us in your image and made us to share in your enduring righteousness. You have put eternity into our hearts. You have implanted within us a vision of life everlasting. This hope we cherish in humility and faith, trusting in your endless goodness and your wondrous love. Into your hand we commit Diane's spirit, for you keep faith with your children in death as in life. And as each of us here knew this remarkable woman, in different personal ways. Let us take a moment for silent remembrance. Amen. May I ask as you are able to please rise. Amalayrachamimshokhainbamromim. <laughs> O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest unto Diane's soul as she has departed this world. Source of mercy, bring her into your presence and let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be thou her possession, may her repose be peace, and let us all affirm. Amen. Please be seated. The words are attributed to King Solomon that the eye is never filled with seeing. Young or old, those who depart this life never see enough of the world, never complete their task, never cherish their loved ones enough before they are called home. How we yearn for yet another respite from this final summons, and how we would yearn to have them close to us for yet another mission in our lives, another joy, another precious moment together. God, be with those whose hearts are broken because parting has come too soon. Console them at this hour when consolation seems so elusive. Be near to them when light seems so distant. Lift them up, O God, when the time comes for healing. If you are able, please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Axel family would like to let you know that Shiva will be observed today at the house on Hazelmere. The family is asking one small consideration. When we leave here, give them some time to get home and get set to themselves. We'll have a service um, upon arrival at the house 
it's almost three o'clock now. Let's say four, three, between, uh, let's say a quarter to four for the service. And of course the door is open. Kaddish is the prayer we associate with death. Yet it never mentions death. Kaddish is a praise. A praise of the world as it is, with its brokenness, with its heartache, with its imperfection. And if there's any prayer in it, perhaps it is in the last line. May the one who makes peace in the heavens make peace for us, for all Israel and all the world. May I ask you to rise as you are able. Yitgadal v'yitkadash shemei raba v'alma divra chirute v'amlich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye t'chol beit Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kariv v'imru amen yehe shmei raba mevarach le'olam u'almei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpaar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Halal, Shme de Kulisha, Brihu, Laela, Minko, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbehata, Venechemata, Da Amiran Baoma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shmaya, Bahaim, Alenu, Vaalko Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O Se Shalom, Bimramav, Huya Se Shalom. Aleinu ve'alko Yisrael ve'imru. Amen. Please be seated. We pray, O God, that you sustain us so that we may meet with serenity the mysteries which lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, O God, are with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our life, our hope in eternity. And for those of us who are gathered here in support of this family, we pray this. Help us to be examples of faith and compassion. Help us to raise this stricken family from the depths of their sorrow slowly and lovingly. Help us to lead them from the night of their desolation to the dawn of another day when the memory of this beloved wife, mother, mother-in-law, daughter, sister, cousin, and friend will return gently and peacefully to their hearts. May she live among them again, allaying their grief, instructing them in living, and finding a clue to the mystery of eternal life. God, go with them. God, teach us, too, to go with them. And to Diane, we say this salutation. Lech kishulachacha, go your way, for you have been called from here. Lech vadonai yimach, go your way, may God be with you. Go your way. May your righteous deeds precede you and the glory of God receive you. Our final thought comes from Chaim Potak. We live less than the time it takes to blink an eye if we measure our lives against eternity. So it may be asked, what value is there to a human life? There is so much pain in the world. What does it mean to have to suffer so much if our lives are nothing more than the blink of an eye? I learned a long time ago that the blink of an eye in itself is nothing. But the eye that blinks, that is something. A span of life is nothing. But the person who lives the span is something. A person can fill that tiny span with meaning. Meaning is not automatically given to life. It is hard to fill one's life with meaning. But a life filled with meaning is worthy of rest. Amen.